Today, we're going to talk about person-centered care and what it means to all of us working in healthcare. Where we once referred to patient-centered care, this has now evolved to person-centered care. Person-centered care recognizes that patients are people first and should not be defined by their disease. A person-centered health system helps people make informed decisions about managing their own health and care. It recognizes that the person's experience also takes into account their family members, caregivers, and providers. It includes deciding when to invite others to act on the person's behalf. And most of all, it acknowledges that a person lives with their condition 24-7, 365, not just the time they're seeing the healthcare team. There are three desired outcomes of a truly person-centric system. They include, one, a better overall experience with the healthcare system. Two, greater satisfaction with the quality of care. Three, greater likelihood of better health outcomes. This requires everyone in healthcare services to work in partnership, to deliver care responsive to the person's individual abilities, needs, preferences, and goals. To achieve a person-centered approach to care, we need to promote patient engagement and activation. Activated patients are armed with the skills, knowledge, and motivation to participate as effective members of the care team to the extent that they are willing and able. An outcome of engaged and activated patients and caregivers is an improved patient experience. Now, not everyone in healthcare works directly with patients. If you don't, you may think that person-centered care doesn't directly apply to your work. But keep in mind that in a person-centric system, patient experience is defined as the sum of all interactions. These interactions influence patient perceptions across the continuum of care. They can be classified into six domains. One, respect for patients' preferences. For example, were family members in care? Two, coordination and continuity of care. For example, did the patient know the next step in their care or who to go to with questions? Three, emotional support. For example, did the patient receive the information they wanted and needed on emotional and relationship changes? Four, physical comfort. For example, was the patient given enough information on possible side effects and how to handle them? Five, access to care. For example, what was the patient experience with their wait time for treatment? Six, information, communication, and education. For example, were tests and treatments explained so that the patient could easily understand the results? Did the patient receive enough information to make informed decisions? So think for a moment. Does your work have an impact on any of these six domains? Could a more person-centric approach in your work take patient preferences into greater consideration? Could you take steps to improve the person's coordination and continuity of care? Are you in a position to provide more emotional support or physical comfort? Could you provide more information that the person or their family may find useful? Bringing person-centered care to life is really about identifying key behaviors that can be embedded in daily routines. It's about breaking down the checklist into a few manageable items that can be incorporated into your delivery of services. To be person-centered is the responsibility of everyone whose role impacts or interacts with patients and their families. It's a lot to think about, knowing how to shape each and every interaction so that it contributes to person-centered care. This is where our person-centered care guideline comes in. This guideline has been developed with the essentials that we must do with each and every patient. It includes, one, knowing the patient as an individual, two, understanding the essential requirements of care, three, tailoring healthcare services for each patient, four, continuity of care and relationships, five, enabling patients to actively participate in their care. By following this guideline, 
you will see a patient as an individual and focus on the whole person within the whole healthcare system. We all take pride in our healthcare system and care about our patients. This guideline will help us deliver the type of care we want and make Ontario's health system the best in the world.